Today we are going to talk about how to manage your units in Patron and MSC Nastron. I have the same question when I was in school and I first started using Patron and Nastron. So here, let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, I'll start off with a very familiar example, a calculator. Your calculator has no notion of units. It's basically up to you to keep track of what units are used throughout your entire calculation process. Uh, it's almost the same thing with Patron and Nastron you're responsible for keeping track of the units you are using. Here is a quick table of the most commonly used unit systems. Uh, for this example, I'm going to be using uh, the second uh, unit system, millimeters, newtons, and megapascals. So let me actually write that down here. So millimeters, newtons, and megapascals. So this is the unit system I'm going to commit to for the entire video, or for most of the video. Uh, towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to use a different unit system here and how the implication of using a weight mass parameter, uh, or rather how it's necessary in some regards. So let me go here and start with this uh, very simple example. I've just imported this piece of geometry let's confirm that the units of this geometry make sense so here let me measure from end to end what the length is here the distance is 1000 since i'm using this unit system anytime i see a length the distance of displacement and deformation it's in units of millimeters here the length is in millimeters or rather it's in it's 1000 millimeters uh, towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you what to do if you import your geometry and instead of getting 1,000 millimeters, you get something like 25, 38, or some other number that doesn't make sense. I'll show you how to correct that and import the model properly so you get the length and the size of the geometry correct. So here, let's go ahead and build a finite element model using this example, and then I'll cover the next few concepts later on. For the properties, let's go ahead and create an aluminum material. Right here, let me pull up the material properties here I have written down. So for the input properties, the Young's modulus will be megapascals. So this would be 68,900 megapascals. And the Poisson ratio will be 0.33. Let's go ahead and click apply. Let's go ahead and assign that material to the solid geometry. So click on solid here, call this property. Here, let me make sure I spell this correctly. Let's go ahead and pick the material we just made a moment ago and apply it to this solid geometry. And now let's go ahead and create our boundary conditions and loads. So here, let's go ahead and create a fix and condition. So when I type in the translation, this will be in units of length. So here's zero millimeters, zero millimeters, and zero millimeters in the X, Y, and Z directions. If for some reason I wanted an initial displacement, I can say 10 here indicating 10 millimeters for the uh, X direction. But here, zero, zero, zero for the X, Y, and Z. Let's go ahead and select the one face of the solid, so this end that you see here on the left. Let's add it and apply the boundary condition. Let's go ahead and create a pressure actually. And we'll call this P for pressure for the input. Your, or rather, the Young's modulus was given in megapascals. After that, any other unit using units of force per unit of area will be in the same unit system. So here, the pressure is in megapascals. So here I'll apply 100 megapascals. You'll see that I'm not typing in millimeters or inches. Uh, this number I know at the very beginning, I committed to using millimeters, newtons, and megapascals, just like you do with your calculator. Let's go ahead and select this face and add it, and then click apply. And now let's go ahead and mesh this real quick. Uh, just in case you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a question or comment in the video description. And then uh, I'm sure we'll all do our best to support you. Let's go ahead and mesh this. So here, let's go ahead and perform a stress analysis by selecting linear static. 
click OK and apply. So in a moment we're going to view our displacement and stress results. And here the analysis was quick. Let's go ahead and look at that now. And let's go ahead and look at the deformation plot first. So here in white, it might be worth shading this a little just so you can see. You can see that I mean, blue is the original finite element model, and here in white is the deformed shape of the model. The maximum deformation is 1.44. At the very beginning, you committed to using millimeters for length. This value of 1.44 is in units of length, so it's 1.44 millimeters. Let's go ahead and look at the stress results. So here, let me switch over to stress. We are looking at the von Mises stress. And one thing I highly recommend if you're performing stress analysis, turn off element averaging and then click apply. Now we're looking at stress distribution for this uh, example. We see we have a stress of 100 units of stress and the units of stress are megapascals. So this is 100 megapascals that we see for this example. And there you have it. That's a very quick example on how to use uh, a unit system in Patron and Astron. You first commit to a unit system to use. Here I selected this unit system. Now you can switch to a different unit system and that I'll explain to you right now. Let's go ahead and maybe select unit system 5 which is using inches. So if we convert uh, 1,000 millimeters to inches, we get uh, 39.37 inches. So here, let's go ahead and write down our new unit system here. So here we're using inches, pounds force, and here our E is in PSI. Our density is in pounds force per inch cubed. And then our weight mass parameter, and I'll teach you more about the weight mass parameter in a moment. Is 0 0.00259. So before I go ahead and switch to that unit system, let's go ahead and import the geometry. I'll go to File, Import, and for the options, make sure you're starting off with the value of 1. And now let's go ahead and select the geometry. Like at the very beginning, when you import your geometry, always make sure to confirm that the size of the model is correct. So here, let's go ahead and show the, what the distance is from end to end. Here we get a distance of 1,000 millimeters, but I want this to be in the size of inches. So we'll have to scale the model on import, so it's actually 39.37 inches on import. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do that. So if I want to get to 1,000, 39.37, let's go ahead and type 39.37 here and divide it by 1000. So I would have to use the scaling factor of 0 0.03937 on import. So here, let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and import this. Oops. So for the units or the scaling factor, I'm going to use a 0 0.03937 here. Click OK, confirm it, and then let's import the geometry. Now let's go ahead and measure the distance from beginning to end. And here I've used the incorrect distance because now it's 0 0.99. And here it would be worth looking at just to make sure I typed in the scaling factor correctly. So let me go ahead and import this again. So let me try 39.37. I suspect that, uh, so here I suspect I may have uh, incorrectly typed in the initial scaling factor. Let's go ahead and type in 1.0 here. Click up OK, then import the geometry again. And here we'll check the distance again. And here it's 25.4. So here, if I want to get to 1,000 millimeters, let's find out what the scaling factor, or sorry, 
If I wanted to get to 39.37 inches, which is 1,000 millimeters, and I want to scale up to 25.4, I would need to use the scaling factor of 1.55. So let's go ahead and use 1.55 here. Click import here. And then we'll use uh, the scaling factor of 1.55, 1.55. And then we'll go ahead and import our geometry. And again, this used to be 1,000 millimeters, but I switched to using inches. I want to make sure that the length of this is properly in inches. So here we expect a value of 39.37 units of length. So let's go ahead and confirm that now. So there we go. We finally have a distance of 39.37. So again, if initially when we import your geometry, it gives you some incorrect number, you would have to play with the scaling when you import your geometry. Uh, here I'm dealing with Parasolid, but if you're importing Katia, you can also do something similar with uh, the units here. Uh, so now that I've imported the model, let me go ahead and switch to my original session here. And now we're going to redo this entire example in inches, pounds, PSI. Um, if you never plan on using inches, pounds, PSI, uh, you can essentially skip this video. Uh, but if you have to use inches, pounds, I think it would benefit you to watch this example too. Let's go ahead and build a solid geometry here. Um, I don't want to import it. I actually want to build it. Uh, so here at 39.37 inches for the length and then for the height and width will be 3.937, 3.937. Let's go ahead and click apply. So here again, we have the same dimensions as before except instead of having a length of 1,000 millimeters, we're using inches, so the length is 39.37 inches. So let's go ahead and repeat the entire process again, just to show you that we are committed to using the fifth unit system here. So let's go through the process. I'll first create a material. So right click material. Here I'll call this aluminum. And then for the input properties, uh, the things modulus is 10,000. And let me look at this 10E6. So that would be uh, 10 MSI here. And let me make sure I'm using the correct units. And for the Poisson ratio is 0.33. And my density is 0 0.0975 inches per, or pounds per inches cubed. So here, let's go ahead and click OK and apply. And now let's go ahead and apply this material to the solid. I'll select this, add it, and OK and apply. And then for my constraint, I'll click Fix. Uh, remember that in translation, uh, these are in units of length. So here, I want to say zero inches, zero inches, and zero inches for the X, Y, and Z directions. And then for the application region, this will be uh, the opposing side. Now, instead of performing a linear stress analysis, I'm going to be performing a type of dynamic analysis. Uh, more specifically, I'm going to be performing an eigenvalue analysis. So typically when you perform a dynamic analysis, you need to supply density. If you supply your density in pounds, inches, cubed, you need to perform a sort of conversion to your density. And here I'm just going through the process of meshing. And now let's go ahead and discuss that. Let me go ahead and configure this to perform a normal modes or eigenvalue analysis. But for the solution parameters, under the weight mass conversion value, I'm going to change the value to 0.0. 0259. Again, this is only required when you're using units for density that are pounds per inches cubed. If you're using another unit system, you probably can just use the default value of 1.0. So now once I type in my weight mass conversion, 
Let me click OK here and here and click Apply to perform the analysis. In a moment, we'll go ahead and see what our natural frequencies are. So let's go ahead and look at that. And here we see that our first natural frequency is 81 or 82 hertz. Uh, so is the second frequency. Our third frequency is 491 hertz and so on and so on. So there you have it. Um, we went through how to use a very simple example for a unit system. Then I discussed what to do when you import your geometry and the units of length don't match up. Uh, basically what you do is uh, you use a scaling when you go ahead and import geometry. So here you scale the value accordingly to import the geometry properly. And then at the end, we use another unit system where we discuss the weight mass parameter. So again, if you're using pounds per inches cubed, you have to use this weight mass parameter. If you use any other system, uh, you basically can disregard the last uh, concept I covered. Um, so in conclusion, uh, there you go. If you have any questions, comments, uh, feel free to leave a comment or question in the video description below. Uh, I and various other young engineers are more than willing to help you. Uh, thank you for watching.